Good morning, everybody. Welcome to First Christian Church. Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent, which means that next week is Christmas. We're almost there. And so today we're going to be talking about this lady here, which you all know, uh, Mary. Uh, Mary is known in Greek as the Theotokos, which means the God-bearer. And that's what we're going to talk about today. You notice that every time you see Mary, she's always wearing blue. Fun fact about Mary, the reason that she's always wearing blue is because in the Middle Ages, blue was one of the most rare colors because it only comes from a stone. The dye that you make paint blue paint with only comes from a stone that, that comes from, at the time, lapis lazuli in Afghanistan. So it was very rare and very expensive. So Mary's always painted um, in blue from paintings in the Middle Ages. Later, of course, they figured out how to make blue a different way, and it made it cheaper. Um, but at the time, that's why even in this little statue here, Mary has a, a, a blue hood on uh, to represent her importance. So as we welcome Mary today uh, to our nativity scene, uh, we welcome you. Of course, we won't welcome Christ to our nativity scene until next week on Christmas Eve. But until then, we welcome you to worship with us. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Now it's time for us to light our Advent candle, so if you'll get your four candles out, we can you can light them along with us at home. I'm going to put the words for you to read up on the screen. O come, long-expected Jesus, born to set your people free from our fears and our sins, release us, Christ, whom our rest shall be. Now your line. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. They shall name him Emmanuel, which means God's with us. And now your lines. Four lights now shine in spite of our despair. Jesus is coming soon. Would you pray with me, please? God of mystery, help us to accept your gifts of grace that we cannot begin to understand. Plant a stubborn hope deep in our hearts as we will be able to embrace the Christ child when Jesus is birthed anew in our lives. Teach us your ways of joy. Amen. We've reached a time in our service where we share with one another our joys and concerns. Of course, you're always welcome uh, to share with us. Uh, you can message us on Facebook. You can, um, you can also message us on YouTube. Or you can uh, send, your, uh, send emails to, FCC, or to pastor at fccpalestine.org. Uh, and we'd love to, love to hear from you there. Um, 
you know, as we as we reach this time of, of prayer, I want to remind you uh, uh, about the services next week. That the twenty first Monday, the twenty first this coming Monday is the longest night of the year, Monday, December twenty first, and so we're going to have a blue Christmas service uh, on that longest night. Um, to uh, it's it's a mixture between a memorial service for those we've lost and a Christmas service uh, for those who are hurting. Or lonely, have lost someone they love recently, um, or or just missing that special someone this Christmas. Uh, and if any year was appropriate for that kind of service, it would be uh, this one. Uh, it's our way of letting people know that it's okay to be sad around Christmas too. It's a happy time, but it's also a sad time, and that's okay. Um, we also will have on Thursday night. Uh, we'll have. Uh, uh, six o'clock and an eight o'clock Christmas Eve service. If you're joining us online like you are now, you can view that service at six o'clock uh, uh, live on on Facebook. Um, and uh, without further ado, let's uh, let's go to God in prayer. Lord, there's a lot to pray for uh, in our world. Uh, it feels like this whole year has been somewhat of a long, long night. Oh Lord, and so we pray for your spirit to come. We pray for the sun to rise. We pray for Emmanuel to come into our lives. And, and even as we think about that, and we think of the, your sun rising over the horizon, um, despite the losses of this year and the hardships of this year, we have seen tremendous kindness. We have seen tremendous goodness. We have seen tremendous grace. So God, we want to thank you for all of your grace. And we want to pray for further mercies to make it through the rest of this year. God, you are a God of grace and forgiveness and wonder and beauty. And even in the dark, your lights twinkle this year. And so God, we give you thanks. Bless those who mourn and comfort them. Heal those who are sick. And give hope to the hopeless. Lift up our eyes that we may see the glory that is all around. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, whose incarnation we celebrate at this time. Amen. Bring 
Our scripture reading today comes from the first chapter of Luke, beginning in verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel, Gabriel, to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and says, Greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come to you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One will be born and be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was unable to conceive is in her sixth month. From no, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. May the Lord add his blessing to this reading. Amen. Well, God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts would be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. I pray, O Lord, that my words would not only be mine, O God, but yours. Amen. Well, Mary is the one we're talking about today who had the birth, who birthed the Savior. Now, I can't imagine. Bearing children was any more pleasant in A.D. 0, really it was 5 B.C., but we, let's not be picky about the dates. I can't imagine that, you know, having a child in 5 B.C. Was, uh, was a very pleasant experience because having a child now, uh, birthing a child now, isn't exactly a pleasant, you know, experience either. Um, I don't know if everybody has, you know... A birthing experience uh, like ours but you know we have two children and we just had you know we just had our second child uh, just about 10 weeks ago eight ten weeks ago and uh, you know both of our birthing experiences weren't exactly pleasant my wife was in labor for you know for a really long time and both times there was uh, there was uh, confusion in the hospital uh, when we went there, and so it like drug things out even more. It was literally like a uh, like what you know, kind of a no room in the end kind of situation. Both times, both times we went up to the hospital, and both times, but on the births of both of our children, we were turned away and had to come back the next day. Literally both times. I don't know if that's a sign or what the, what that was, but it just so happened. That two years apart, this the the in different ways the same kind of the same kind of thing happened, um, and um, it was you know it, it it was a it was a painful experience for my wife you know it was it was painful for me to to be there and watch it but not you know half as painful as it was uh, for her you know I I hear all kinds of couples that have crazy birth stories about you know what happened and. Uh, even we had a we had a doula the first our first child and she talked about how you know she was like you just need to prepare yourself because nobody is completely rational when they're in that much pain you're just you know you're not going to be normal she was like you know I'm normally a pretty calm person but I cussed out my husband and threw ice at him you know to get across the room and you know it's like well you know when you're in that much pain you can't expect somebody would and Stevie was was not like that at all um, but you know, uh, but but she was in a lot of pain, and that you know hurt me to see that uh, her bringing these you know children 
bringing these children into the world. And, and so I can, uh, I can sort of see that, that this bringing this child you know, into the world was, was an uncomfortable and, and painful experience you know, from, from the get-go. Um, because even before she realizes she's, you know, before she realizes she's pregnant, she's told by an angel, basically like a stranger in your house, like this glowing stranger shows up inside of your house and says, hey, you're going to have a baby. And you're thinking, oh my gosh, somebody's broke into my house. No, don't be afraid, Mary. You know, I'm an angel and you're going to have the son of God. You know, and as this young girl, you would be freaked out. So like from the beginning, and then there's like social ostracization because she's afraid that no one's going to accept her because who's going to believe that? Oh, I'm pregnant before I'm married. Who, whose baby is it? Oh, it's, the, it's God's baby. Yeah, right, Mary. You know, everybody probably said. Even Joseph, her, her betrothed, was going to, you know, di- kind of divorce her in silence, like break off their engagement because he didn't even believe it until... Until an angel came to him and told him, and so he didn't, you know, so he didn't break it off. So immediately in Mary's life, there's the discomfort of of, of the social situation. There's this strange kind of uh, of situation uh, with, with with the Son of God being born, and uh, and and then there's of course all the normal stuff that goes along with birthing and rearing children, particularly in the fifth century B.C. Um, when they don't have all the comforts and accoutrements uh, that, that they do now. You know, you, you ever thought about how Jesus was delivered without an epidural? You know, without any pain medicine? Like, like every woman went through then, uh, back then? Uh, and, and that's what Mary went through to, to bring Christ in, into the world. But the Greeks have this, the Greeks have this term for Mary... They, they use, it's called Theotokos. And literally it means God-bearer. Because when you think about Mary, if she was pregnant, of course, with Christ, that means she literally carried the Christ child inside of her, in her womb. And so she is called Theotokos, the God-bearer. But, you know, when you think about later Christianity as well, like what happens later after Christ is crucified um, and after he ascends to heaven, what are we told happens at Pentecost, right? The Holy Spirit comes down to indwell the hearts of those who believe. And so we as Christians to this day believe that the Spirit of Christ dwells inside of us. And so, though we are not physically pregnant with the Christ child, we are spiritually pregnant, as Mary was, with the Christ. We are also Theotokos. In that way, Mary carrying the Christ child was a precursor to every believer who would come afterwards. She was kind of the first Um, to be indwelled by the Holy Spirit and birth that Christ child into the world. Now, what does that mean, you know, for you and me? Of course, we're not literally going to get pregnant uh, with with the Christ child. Um, I love my children, uh, but they are not little, you know, they're not Jesus for sure. Um, They're good kids, but they're not Jesus good. Um, But so what does that mean for us? What it means for you and me as believers, particularly at Christmas, is it means that you are Theotokos. You are carrying God around with you. You are bearing Christ wherever you go. And sometimes that means that it is not going to be pleasant. Just like childbirth is never a pleasant thing, Just like childbirth is usually a painful kind of ordeal, something that you kind of suffer through and it's joyful at the end, the Christian life can be like that because we are literally birthing Christ into our lives. We're carrying around this spirit within us and we are trying to bring what is inside of us, the love of Jesus that's in our hearts, out into the world. We are trying to manifest that 
as the Word became flesh, as John tells us, we're trying to birth that into the world by the way we live, and it's hard. It's not easy bearing the Spirit of Christ. It is not easy being Theotokos. It is not easy making the Word become flesh. And so we groan and we suffer sometimes as a result of this faith. But it also gives us hope for what comes after. Just as Paul says, Christ bore the cross for the joy that would be His afterwards. A lot like childbirth, kind of. You bear this kind of painful moment for the joy that will be yours afterwards. But he also says in Romans chapter 8, don't you see what this means? He says the whole world is longing in birth pains, crying out and groaning for the children of God to be revealed. Romans 8. The whole world is groaning for Christ to be birthed into the world again, to be incarnate in flesh. And we are the ones that are carrying His Spirit around inside of us, just waiting to be birthed. And so what I'm here to tell you today and what the real message of Christmas is, you know, they always say Christmas is about Jesus. Jesus is the reason for the season. Don't forget about Christmas. You know, don't forget about Jesus at Christmas. But and that's absolutely true. But this Theotokos thing that I'm telling you is what that means. If Christ, if the season is really going to be uh, about Christ, it is about our birthing that Christ into the world. And so in every little act of kindness and goodness that you have seen this year, every act of caring that one human being does for another, every act of sacrifice that one human being does for another, every act of the outpouring of love is a little bit of, is like a new Christ child born into the world. It is the spirit of, of God made manifest in the world and the love of God and God's kingdom becomes more real and more manifest in every single one of those actions. And so it doesn't, you know, yes, we've had a hard year and things have been dark and it has been weird and there's been a lot of darkness and ugliness and just awfulness in the world this year. A lot of evil in the world this year. But there has also been, but Christ has also been born into this world and made flesh over and over and over again by all those ways that we have worshipped, that we have cared, that we have sacrificed for one another. So, you know, earlier in the pandemic, a lot of people were uh, were rightly so praising our, our health care workers who, you know, are kind of on the front lines of the pandemic. And uh, because many of our hospitals were full and kind of, uh, you know, our systems were kind of overwhelmed. And, and, and so um, but as this new wave hit, it's actually, wor- you know, worse than it was before. And we are all, you know, busy thinking about Christmas and you know, kind of have other things on our mind, and we're all tired of the COVID stuff anyway, and so there hasn't been as much outreach to our to our hospital staff, uh, particularly here, because now it's really bad here, you know, and the, and the uh, hospital's full, um, and the, the staff is overworked and really tired, and, uh, and also, there's just a lot of people here that don't even believe it's that serious of a thing, and, you know, when you live in a community like that, and and you see stuff on Facebook and there's people telling you all this stuff that it's not real or it's not that serious. And like you've just seen people die, you know, it's hard. Um, and, and so with, with, with uh, you know, we've sent masks and cookies as our church and to just let, our, let those people know that we appreciate them. But then the, uh, uh, one of the Rotary Club that I'm involved with too, we went there and provided lunch for the whole, for the whole hospital staff and 
they were able to come outside and, and get whatever they wanted. And it was kind of cold and rainy, and everybody was masked up and had all their gear on and stuff. And we had umbrellas, and you know, we were helping people. Um, but in those, in those brief exchanges, just in those you know, little exchanges between uh, people holding umbrellas, even through a mask and goggles and you know, all that stuff, um, when you when you look into someone's eyes who's who's sacrificing themselves like these these healthcare workers are, you know whether they're um, cleaning the rooms, um, you know we don't really think about the people who clean COVID patients' rooms, you know those people, or or you you know you're helping somebody on a ventilator uh, and you're working really hard under these really stressful conditions. Just having you know somebody say that we appreciate you and we thank you uh, for for what you're doing. And in that moment, right, in that moment, the Word of God is made manifest. The Spirit of Christ that's within us, that's telling us to do those types of things, is made real in that exchange, in that look, in that, uh, act, of, uh, in that act of thanksgiving, in that act of gratitude, in that act of caring, that the, the Word of God is made manifest, um, so whether because whether you you know call on someone because it's their birthday or because it's Christmas or you're checking on them and you you, you make sure that they feel you know loved and appreciated, those things are really uh, making Christ manifest in the world. Because you know if you if if you uh, live your life and and everybody has their ups and downs, particularly this year, it's been really hard. Uh, and, uh, you know, like if you're a nurse or, or a doctor or a healthcare worker or you work in a hospital and you've been you overworked and you're tired, um, you begin to think things like, hey, man, is this all worth it? Like I'm, I'm sacrificing so much of myself. Um, even if you're a parent, you know, and, and you're caring for your kids all the time and you love your kids, but you're tired, you know, you, you kind of you, all this sacrifice you make and, and you begin to you sometimes you think, you know, is this worth it? Is this this is hard and it doesn't seem like it's paying off. But then when somebody says, thank you, I appreciate you. When someone uh, does a, an act of kindness for you um, or just says that they care about you or does some kind of act of service to let to let you know that they do care, those sorts of things let people know that being good is worth it. You know? That be, because being good and, and living your life in a Christ-like way, birthing Christ like we're talking about in the world, is hard. It's not easy. Uh, and, and it's because the world is often a dark and cruel place. But when you live your life in, in, in such a way that 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 lets people know you know how how great things can be and, and reminds them of 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 the beauty and wonder that is in the world in those brief moments in those brief exchange or in a longer exchange you let them know that it's worth it their sacrifice is worth it that that being good does pay off at least with appreciation That living like Christ is worth it. And in so doing, more of Christ's life is put out there into the world, is birthed into the world. You know, not quite in a physical way like Mary did, but in those acts of caring, those, those acts made manifest, those thoughts made manifest, the Word becomes flesh and dwells among us. You have the Spirit of Christ inside of you. You walk around with it everywhere you go. And in your acts of gift giving, your acts of kindness, your acts of care, your acts of genuine concern for others, you bear Christ into the world. And the more Christ there is in the world, the brighter it gets. That's really what Christmas is about. You are Theotokos. It is the good news of the gospel. It is the word of the Lord. Amen.
We've reached a time in our service where we share with one another in communion. So if you'll go ahead and get your elements if you don't have them already. On the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he took the bread and after blessing it, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. And in the same way, he also took the cup after supper and he said, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. For as often as you eat my body and you drink my blood, you proclaim my death until I come again. In that great and rich tradition of Jesus Christ and the Last Supper with His disciples, that we are gathered here today, that we take this meal every Sunday. So let us pray. God, we pray for this body that it would be your body, this bread that it would be your body, and that it would help us to realize that as we take these elements into ourselves, that we are indeed Theotokos. We carry you around. God, we pray that you would bless this cup, that it would be your blood to us, that we would be able to feel your spirit as it flows through us, waiting to be born into the world. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus the Christ, whose sacrifice makes all this possible. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for you. The blood of Christ, shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Thanks be to God. Again, everyone, I thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I hope that you realize how important it is that you are a God-bearer, that, um, that the presence of our God lives in you, and you, uh, even though it's hard sometimes, are in the process of, of birthing the Word become flesh into our world. So, so uh, even though this is a weird Christmas and it's hard on everybody, when you go... Go with that assurance wherever you go, whether you go somewhere online or whether you are are going somewhere in person, whether you're celebrating at home or with family, make sure to remind yourself in your heart that you bring Christ with you and the fruits of of that coming of Christ will be seen in your life. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us and all of us have the potential to make that happen. So I pray that the Lord would bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and give you peace and grace both now and in the life to come. Amen. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you next week.